Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lars Schall. I am an independent financial journalist from Germany, and I am now connected with a former parliamentary state secretary to the Federal Minister of Defense in Germany, Willy Wimmer. Hello, Mr. Wimmer. Yeah, hello, Mr. Schall. We agreed to talk about the situation in the Ukraine, and what would you say is essential in your view to understand the crisis in the Ukraine? Is this just about the Ukraine, or is the problem much bigger? Um, Mr. Schall, I think the uh, problem is much bigger and uh, goes back to the early 90s when the United States decided not to follow the path of cooperation in Europe, but to use its military might uh, in uh, doing things, especially and starting on the Balkans, which uh, harmed the European development in an unusual way. Instead of cooperation, they went to use uh, force, the military force, and um, this development not only started in the ordinary war of aggression against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, but um, continued to create trouble uh, when uh, they um, invaded Iraq. We have the same situation in Syria, in Libya, and in Afghanistan. So what we now see in the Ukraine, in my understanding, uh, started uh, in the 90s and um, is now entering perhaps in a final stage against uh, the Russian Federation. Yeah. Uh, do you think the intention of the U.S. is to split Europe and to prevent that the Ukraine could become a bridge between the EU and the Eurasian Union? Um, after the uh, war against Yugoslavia, I took part in a conference in Bratislava in May 2000, which had been organized by the top leadership of the State Department and the U.S. Enterprise Institute, and um, uh, many of uh, those uh, in the audience who followed the debate were prime minister, foreign ministers, uh, and so on from the uh, countries between the Baltic Sea and the Mediterranean, especially on the eastern side. And uh, the uh, leading people from the State Department presented actual plans to be followed by the United States in Central Europe. And at the end, I wrote a letter because of that to uh, then Chancellor Gerhard Schröder. At the end, uh, they told us, look, we have a plan which looks as perhaps follows. We draw a line from Riga at the Baltic to Odessa across the continent and from there to Diyarbakir in Turkey. Everything which is west of this line it belongs, belongs to the U.S. dominated area and everything which is east of this line might be the Russian Federation but it's of no interest to us. I think um, sooner as we expected um, to happen uh, this was the line of U.S. policy uh, on the European continent with regard especially to the countries in Central Europe and especially also with regard to the uh, Russian Federation. And what we see now in the Ukraine is the answer to your question. They are interested in dividing Europe and they are preventing the Ukraine to be um, a country where um, Western Europe, the Europe of the European uh, Community, and the Russian Federation might cooperate. Yeah. Uh, have we seen some sort of a coup d'etat in the Ukraine? When we look on the events um, on the Maidan, and especially after the efforts of the um, three European foreign ministers, um, the German, the Polish, and uh, the French, and the agreement which had been signed uh, together with uh, President Yanukovych, uh, yes, we have to say it was a coup d'etat because at the end, um, these three European foreign ministers 
tried to find a solution because of the ongoing events in the Ukraine. And um, this was uh, power sharing um, among those who represent parties or groups in the Ukraine and um, with regard to uh, the various regions uh, in the Ukraine. And um, this um, agreement which had been signed, uh, this was destroyed by those who wanted, under all circumstances, to get um, um, President Yanukovych out of power, and we all know the result. In the end, these uh, groups who didn't want to cooperate with all U uh, people in the Ukraine, they formed a new government, and they are now trying what they can to um, make decisions on others to follow this development, and they try to do it via the OSCE and other organizations. They will force others to, ne no, to negotiate with them, although they do not represent um, the legal formula of transition, and they do not follow the uh, normal European consensus on creating a new government. What are your thoughts on the Russian position? Is it comprehensible? The Russian position, um, I think um, we have to understand the developments um, in the night when um, President uh, Yanukovych had to leave uh, Kiev. The first decision the new authorities made in Kiev had been to get rid of the um, language laws in the Ukraine. And um, this effort was directed against all other, instead of Ukrainian-speaking population. And we know that almost half of the population, or 40 percent, speak Russian. And in, under these dramatic circumstances, circumstances, and especially because of the events going on on the Maidan place, I think everybody who lived in eastern Ukraine, is, it was necessary for them to have fear. And instead of creating a civil war, the Russian decision at least to show presence might have, have prevented this civil war, which it didn't occur until now. Uh, I know that under legal circumstances, um, we have to look very carefully on the development, but if the, uh, if the Russian Federation wouldn't have um, showed presence as it did, we might already have uh, a turmoil in the Ukraine which uh, could have a major influence on the development uh, all over Europe. China's leadership has indicated that we are witnessing the beginning of a new Cold War. Do you agree with that? And what do you think about the comparisons between 1914 and 2014? Um, the, um, I think we have to take... Um, Chinese um, recommendations and uh, uh, Chinese um, ideas very serious, um, especially when it comes to the comparison between the Maidan events and Tiananmen Square. Um, for me, it's uh, interesting that um, after these 80 or 90 people being shot on the Maidan Square, um, I think it would be, under European circumstances, absolutely essential, normal, and necessary to have an inquiry on this um, by the Council of Europe and by the OSCE. It is of, I am of no understanding uh, at all uh, that uh, these European and international uh, bodies uh, are quiet because of these events, because under normal circumstances, these events could be compared to the events on Tiananmen Square. And perhaps this is an answer to the question, who organized it? I'm completely astonished because of that. 
the Chinese have a good understanding, and it's necessary for them to have an understanding on the events uh, in Europe, because when this development, which started in the war against Yugoslavia, and I mentioned the other steps before, when they now cross the border to the Russian Federation, the Chinese are absolutely sure that they are the next. And the interesting thing happened um, when um, um, the events in the Ukraine became problematic, when we heard about this crucial attack in the um, capital of Yunnan province in China, in Kunming, when uh, more than 30 people had been slaughtered. We had a similar development in the late 90s before it came to the war against Yugoslavia, that in Xinjiang province, in the western part of China, of China uh, many bomb attacks happened. And at that time, the Spiegel wrote that, um, as far as they thought, um, there is, had been no doubt that uh, uh, American institutions had to be connected to these events. And we expected at that time a war perhaps against China because of Tibet. When you look back some 15 years, uh, you are familiar with the situation. So things which happen here have a repercussion on Chinese territory as well, and they are familiar with these developments. And therefore, I think we have, into, uh, we have to take into consideration what really happens on, Euro, in, on European soil in these days. And the situation which can be compared now to the events in 1914 or even before, I think we have a very simple understanding. It's not complicated. After the wars against uh, Napoleon, um, the, the Russian Tsar and the Austrian Chancellor uh, Metternich, they made a proposal to um, create a body in Europe which was organized by a common understanding, common values at that time, and to prevent these disastrous destructions on um, European ter territory which had been created by Napoleon, you can say later on by Hitler. And the idea to cooperate among the big powers uh, on the European continent, this idea was destroyed by Great Britain because cooperation on the continent was obviously hostile to British interests. And what we see now, starting in the 90s on the uh, European continent, there must be the similar idea um, in Washington. It was cooperation in Europe by the CSE, which made it possible to have um, German unification and to have the end of the Cold War. Cooperation had been and was the answer and still is to the problems we have on the continent. And because of the war against Yugoslavia, the Americans destroyed this peaceful effort and they destroyed international law because they raged the war against Yugoslavia without approval of the United Nations and we created the United Nations because of the experience of the Second World War. I think it is not complicated. You see what's going on on the continent. One final question. Do you consider the press coverage in the, of the Ukrainian crisis in Western mainstream media as a glorious deed? When you read um, German newspapers or when you see German TV, it is not only mainstream, it is organizing the psychological mood for more than a confrontation. And um, it is a pity that our newspapers are mainstream and everybody who thinks different is, 
in a mental sense um, prosecuted. Uh-huh. Um, do you think that uh, the German public uh, gets the information it needs in order to judge right about this situation? Um, you can answer this question when you see the international news uh, stations like uh, BBC, um, uh, Russia Today, uh, France 24, uh, and especially Al Jazeera. Um, Al, Al Jazeera is in these days as fair as possible. When you see these news stations and you, when you realize what's going on on German TV, I think uh, you know the reality. And it was for me outstanding that as the main speaker on the uh, CSU event uh, this week in, in Passau, when the Christian Social um, Party met with more than 5,000 people, the main speaker had been Peter Gauweiler, and he strongly advocated to continue the friendship with Russia. The applause was enormous. He got um, uh, outstanding applause. And when you see what, it, uh, what we could read in the newspapers, it was nothing. So people are not interested in the press in listening to this or that opinion. They are just following mainstream, and so they want to deal with the Russians in a way the Russians never can accept. Okay, I thank you very much for this conversation. Yeah, Mr. Schall, good luck. Thank you.